You are about to listen to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening to us at MaximumThreshold.net. Horns up, fists in the air. All right, this is Dave from MaximumThreshold.net, hanging out with Mikey from Cold Chamber. What's up, Mike? What up, man? How you doing? All right, pretty good. Thanks for coming on, man. So, yeah, we're hanging out at Webster Hall here for the show. Um, so, how many uh, shows have you been in the store? So uh, I think we've done, I think it's been about 20 shows so far. We're a little over halfway through. The shows have been insanely killer Yeah. Uh, to get the response we've gotten for taking that much time off and the headline. You know, we're kind of feeling the waters to see how it would be. It's been insane. So, you know, all the fans from back in the day, they're bringing their kids out. And it's, it's just been unreal. I'm, I'm just like on cloud nine for the whole thing. It's been pretty sick. So, like, you guys got, you broke up in 2002, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got back in 11? 2011, we just right. went, we weren't getting back together. We just went to do Soundwave just to kind of put an exclamation point kind of on, because when we broke up, it was really bad. Right. It was bad, bad. And uh, so did we you did steal that. each other's gear or no? No, no. I sold some gear for some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's another story. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we got back together, did, did Australia, we did sideshows with Manson, and they were insane. So we said, oh, let's keep going. Right. Then we did South America, then we did Europe, and then we did the run with Seven Dust. And uh, it all went well. And then we took you know, some more time off, another year, because we never said, hey, let's do a new record. You know, we didn't want to force anything. Right, that's cool. And we became friends, which we never were, ever, like from day one. Yeah. There was always tension. I mean, before our last breakup, 2002, we probably broke up 10 times before that. Oh, yeah. That was just the culmination of everything. <laughs> there was fights constantly right. in, in the band before. So we could have gotten back together over the 12 years to go make some money, pay the rent, whatever. And uh, we didn't want to force it. Oh, that's you know? cool. So we became friends. We actually sat down and talked and became friends and got to know each other for real. Over lunch or how did that work out? With the or freak. sitting by the poolside or are you going? Yeah, actually some, some of them were poolside. But, uh, did you we, throw we, anybody in the pool? Myself. It's probably wasted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we didn't talk for like, me and Meeks are best friends. We've, we talked over all the years. And we, right. we talk almost every day. And uh, we didn't talk to Des for probably five years. It was a long time. And I, I quit music. You know, I ran out of my money, lost a house, lost the car, did the, the whole cliche. Right. You know, lost two of my dogs, well, split I, the dogs yeah, up in the relationship. Yeah. The, the whole typical thing. Yeah, totally. You know, became a drug addict, you know, alcoholic, all that. The typical thing. You still have your mind, it seems, so that's, that's good, right? <laughs> I quit doing drugs and drinking. <laughs> sober now. Still cuckoo, though. Congrats, man. But, uh, so me, Meeks actually went to a Devil Driver show in uh, Pomona, California. And went on stage with them and played loco with Devil Driver. So that kind of broke the ice, I think. And then we just started talking, man. And it just, we didn't force it, it just, it's here now. Right, excellent. Yeah, so I see that you have the new album coming out, Rivals. Yeah. Yes. Coming out in May, right? Fucking can't get here quick enough. Right on, man. That's yeah. Excellent. So how did that come about? Like, how did the writing process come about? Um, well, you know, once we did the, the tours and shit, we started th talking about writing. And uh, so me and Meigs would just sit down and write some stuff and uh, send it to Dez, just little parts. And Dez would send whisper vocal tracks through the iPhone, and we would start writing songs like through the, through the iPhone. Oh, that's cool. And uh, just ideas, you know. And then uh, once Nadia was back on board, you know, we started jamming in a room, and, and we were writing a song a day, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Writing a song, leave it alone. Write a song, leave it alone. And then we went back and revisited all the songs once Dez had parts. and. It just it came together quickly, man. I thought it was gonna take years to write it, right. and we just fucking banged it out. I think there was a lot of angst built up. Did you have like a deadline you set, or it just it just fell into place really? Like, well, the, you know, the label gives you a budget for right. certain things, so you try to make a deadline. Right. And we actually finished earlier than our deadline on the pre-production side. And then, uh, you know, then we went to Florida, flew to Florida, recorded the record. Yeah. So the new label, can you tell us a little bit about it? Napalm. They. Yeah. Uh, they came out of nowhere, and uh, you know, Devil Drivers on Napalm, and uh, we didn't really need a label. We were all those other tours before we did all by ourselves. No oh, label, okay. no nothing, because we didn't have a record to support. Just by having being friends with the band and everything, you just jumped on the tour. They asked you how that worked out. Yeah, well, you know, we have with since we toured dust. so much in the past, yeah. and we, you know, we toured seven to 
10, 15 times or whatever. Because you were with Sharon Osbourne. Right? Yeah. And, uh, well, they were with J.J. French, right? Yeah. I, think. yeah We've, I mean, Seven Dust was like one of the first tours we did. Us and Seven Dust came out at the same time. So just because we toured with all these bands before, we got the tours. So we didn't have a label. And uh, our booking agent got the tours. And, uh, you know, we we're self-sufficient. We didn't need to take money from anybody. We were paying That's everything cool. ourselves. It was great. And then... Then the the record uh, talk came about, and Napalm jumped on board, and said, you know, we'll, we'll advance the record, and we'll, you know, do this, we'll promote it, and you know, we're a little hesitant to sign a new deal because you know we're still getting used to each other as right. it is, and then you're locked into some shit. But everything's worked out perfectly. There's a healthy relationship so now good, since, yeah. Yeah, you know, when you're off the stuff, you know, it's uh, it, it seems to fall in place. Yeah, yeah. on the seven, seven of stars, a maniac. Right? Uh, yeah. Like, I, don't I know remember, you were trashing your drums or something. I read something. Oh, I do that, that anyway. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my new tech. Like Jimmy Kimmel or something? Yeah, pretty much. It, it gets rowdy up there. <laughs> and I think I'm crazier now that I'm sober on stage. But uh, right. my new tech bolts everything down so I can't knock it off. Oh, really? He's got the hand power tools he, for you? He does. <laughs> Instead he's, of a drum key, he's, he's up there. He's drilling shit drill. down. <laughs> he's like, dude, you ain't kicking shit over. I'm like, damn. <laughs> So, yeah, man, it's just going good. The label's been so supportive, and, you know, like I said, the record's not even out yet, so can't wait till it comes out. Who produced the album? Uh, Mark Lewis. Uh, he did Whitechapel's latest record, mm -hmm. all the Cannibal Corpse records. Right. Just a new, young face, and he just gets the sickest tones. Right. It's just insane. The drums, insane guitar, vocals. You know, we re recorded it old school. We got all the tones right off the bat. We didn't fix it in the computer. Because I was gonna say, like your, you know, your sound, the band sound is unique. To it's itself. All, you can it's, just tell it's cold chip. Yeah, you know, it's all quiet. original tones that we got. We didn't do it later. Right you on. know, everything was right off the bat yeah. tones. That's how we used to record. You couldn't fix it in the computer back in the day. Right. So you know, we just spent a lot of times on the tones and making sure it sounded like us, but modern, more modern. You know, because times have changed, and it just sounds King Kong, man. It's, it's nasty. Nice. It's a nasty record. Yeah, how long did it take you to re record it, man? Um, it took when you flew down there. I was supposed to be done in a week. I was there for two and a half weeks. Right. Well, that you know how that goes. It's always yeah. fucking something just, or another. You know, producers love to make you play shit all fucking day, <laughs> so just nonstop all day. And then think he liked hanging out with you, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm hilarious. <laughs> 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 I'm good to look at, you know what I mean? Did you wear a man of war gator skin loincloth? Or no, no, he wouldn't let me go that far. I'm all, I'm all about wearing a dress when I'm playing or something. But uh, yeah, so we're, the band was in Florida for two months, and then Des does the vocals at his house. He has a vocal studio. Oh, cool. So he gets to be in his own environment. That's really cool, actually. And his backyard looks like fucking Hawaii. There's waterfalls and... So he's wherever he's comfortable is where we like to keep him. That's up in the valley, or he lives like uh, out in the desert, kind of in California. Oh, okay. Really nice, awesome, quiet. Victorville area. Or yeah, whatever. he lives like down the street from Kerry King. Like, oh, okay. that's where everybody's moving. Oh, so affordable housing in California. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it is. It's like that here in Jersey, man. Same yeah. Shit. yeah, New York and New Jersey. Excellent. So, are you gonna play anything off? Like, you gonna play like I O U? Yeah, I O U and Rivals were playing. Right. Excellent. Uh, we can't play. We can play more, but we're not going to. Uh, because uh, people are going to film it, then they're going to post it, and people are going right. to think that's how the record sounds through someone's phone recording. Right. And they're exactly. like, oh, that record sounds like shit. It's like, that's not how the record sounds. So we're playing the two off the, the new record. Once the record comes out, we'll probably play five or six. Okay, that's cool. So we're playing something off every record. And it's a long set. It's right. 16 songs. Okay, and also, uh, you know, obviously after... Um after this uh, tour, you're gonna obviously release the album in May. What's the future for the summer? Do you have any plans? Um, well, after this tour, we take four days off. We go to South America. We're doing the Monsters of Rock in Brazil with Ozzy and James yeah, Priest. Priest, it's nice. been like a hundred thousand people. They're telling every time like, someone tells me like, "Oh, it's like four million people." So it's a big festival. Victim of changes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's all the bands I grew up on. Hell yeah. You know, we've I've, we've done it before, and every time I'm just like like a little kid. And uh, we're doing a headlining show in Mexico City. We're playing in uh, Santiago, Chile. Then we take three weeks off. We do the UK, and then the record comes out, and that's when the work really begins. So we, we don't like to take days off. We like to play right. days off. You, you know, I, I don't need to sit in a hotel. <laughs> yeah, I want to work. Man. Hurry up and wait, right? Yeah. It's like the fucking uh, the military. Yeah. <laughs> Get to the venue. Now what? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Did you guys hang out in the city today? Or? Yeah, I walked around the village. And that's good. Cool. Buy, buy anything? 
No, I bought my friend is the uh, my friend Kurt. He's the guy on People's Court that's in the hallway that interviews people when they're oh, coming no out. Shit. That's my good buddy. So we had lunch today, and uh, I love his job. He gets paid to be a dick. I love it. <laughs> He's been doing that 19 years, man. Sweetest guy on the planet. He's coming tonight. That's what they usually call drummers. Yeah. Oh, I'm an asshole, bro. <laughs> I'm the nicest I'm a asshole drummer, too, actually. Yeah. yeah. So. I just hit stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Hit that's stuff it. and make jokes. Were you, like, formally trained, or how did you uh, come about in the scene? My older brother was playing. You know, you always want to be like your older brother. Right. And uh, he, you know, taught me, and then he would tell me, just practice on a pillow. But he had a drum set, so that anytime he would leave, I just go play on the drum set. He's like, no, you gotta learn, do the rudiments. And oh yeah. So I never really sat and practiced like that. So I just started hitting and just got in bands. And I don't really like the the drummer aspect of the personal thing. I like being in a band. I hate the personal recognition, like drum magazine and stuff. Right. They're asking me drum questions, like, oh, so you do this three times a day? I'm like, no. You know, I'm the worst drum interview guy ever. I like band right. stuff. I like being in a band. It's a team. It's like a sport to me. Right. You know, it's camaraderie and, and all that shit. Okay. I didn't get in a band to be the best drummer in the world. Right. I got in a band to be in a band. Right. That's cool. so, what, what kind of equipment are you using? Are you sponsored? Or? D-Drum fucking loves me to death, and I love them. They okay. give me everything that I need. And uh, Zildjian, uh, Vader, Gorilla Snot I use for my gloves because I'm soaking wet always. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I got a good support group. You know, the whole band's endorsed by great companies. Right. And, you know, I lost all my endorsements when we broke up because I guess going to jail isn't good on a resume. So right. I was in jail and, and all that stuff. And I quit playing. So I had to get all my endorsements back. Just like as if we started completely over the whole process. Right. So it's been fun. Was that like something you did independently or was it like a management thing that Just helped you? Or? talking to people, going to NAM, which I fucking hate now. Right. It's like a big headache. <laughs> It's like 25 people playing snare drums. I'm like, shut up. You're not going to buy anything. It's like going to the Sam Ash. <laughs> yeah, it's Sam Ash Guitar Center. Yeah. When I get stuff from Guitar Center, I make them leave it at the front door. And I drive up, sign a paper, and take it. Oh, that's I cool. can't handle 10 minutes in, in Guitar Center. <laughs> it's the worst place on the planet. No offense, Guitar Center. Yeah. You, go, you going to Van Halen in the summer? Or <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone's in there having band practice. Guitar players over there. The drummer's like... Let's go. You know, it's 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 a horrible place. Excellent. So yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on. Hell I just yeah. want to end it up. Um, if you could um, do a promo ID for me, yeah. if you don't mind, just say your name. You're you're listening to Maximum Threshold. Say something sick at the end, man. Okay. Yeah. Yo, this is Mikey from Coal Chamber. You're listening to Maximum Threshold, and we're ready to rock your socks off. <laughs> All right, Mike. Yo, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, man. All right. Show, man. Yeah.
You have just listened to an exclusive interview on Maximum Threshold Radio. Thanks for listening and please visit us at MaximumThreshold.net.